Hello family, this is Refueling Your Faith and today we're going to be talking about you still have purpose. We're going to be looking at Matthew 28, 19 through 20. You still have purpose. Uh, during this season, many of us have lost loved ones, have lost um, jobs, have lost so many things, cars, houses, you name it. Many of us have lost those things and you may be watching this video today feeling aimless as if, you know, why or why am I still here? Because I, the things that define me, the things that meant something to me are gone. And I just came by to remind you that you still have purpose. In Matthew, we find a group of 11 disciples. One disciple was no longer with them because they had betrayed their leader and they were destitute. They were depressed because their leader, Jesus, had been crucified on the cross and um, they no longer felt a mission. They no longer felt a purpose because their leader, who they thought was going to build a kingdom that would overtake the kingdom that was oppressing them, the Roman government, that they felt like they didn't have anyone to lead them. And so they were in the same spot that you may be feeling now, aimless, unsure about what their goal in life was. But Jesus did not die, as we all know. He died, but then he was resurrected. And in his resurrection, he visited those 11 disciples in Matthew 28, and he told them what their purpose was now, because he still was not going to be with them. Although he was alive, he would go and be united with God um, in heaven. But there was a mission, there was, there was a purpose for, that he had for them, and that is Matthew 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. And that is the purpose that we have as believers today. I just watched a movie, Overcomer. I'd watched it before, but watched it again this weekend. And basically, the movie is about our identity. And the man uh, was speaking to another gentleman, another character in the uh, movie, and was basically helping him to understand who he was, apart from being a, a, a basketball coach, apart from being um, a parent, apart from being a son, apart from being all of that. If all of that was stripped away, he was a Christian. And when we experience difficulty in life and we're losing so many things and we feel that we have lost our identity, if, if you are a believer listening today, your mission is clear. You are a Christian above all things. And your mission is to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. That is your purpose. So, however you're feeling, if you like your job, if you hate your job, if you like where you live, if you hate where you live, if you're feeling lost because of lost loved ones, refocus, recalibrate yourself with this mission, go and make disciples. I love go because so many times we think, people should come to us. But this goal indicates that we are to be intentional about seeking out those that do not have a relationship with God. Do you know if someone on your job has a relationship with God? Do you know? Have you asked in your home or have you been assuming that someone knows Christ in your own home? Be energized by going. By in, Be intentional about, it says, making disciples. Why am I going? To make disciples. This is important because so many times we stop at the believer. Everybody claps their hands when people respond to the invitation at church, but my heart continues to pray for them because it's about being a disciple, not just a believer, not just believing that Jesus Christ died, but there is a two, there is a requirement, a responsibility that comes with being a believer, and that's that you be a disciple. A disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. These people who are accepting Jesus Christ and we 
who have accepted Jesus Christ. Our responsibility is to represent Christ in this world. Our responsibility is to follow after Jesus Christ, not just by going to church, but in our actions, in our attitude. The fruit of the Spirit that is within us says that we ought to operate in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control in all aspects of our lives, in all aspects of our lives. And so therefore, we are to go and make disciples, make believers, not just believers, but disciples, followers who are representing Christ in their homes, representing Christ on their jobs, representing in action and attitude. How do we do this? Well, we're supposed to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, uh, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit baptizing them. But first we have to tell them about Jesus Christ. And here is where I really encourage each and every one of us to know how to lead someone to Christ. So many times we invite people to church, but God may be calling you as you're spending your time with him to lead someone, your child, your co-worker to Christ yourself. And you don't need a, a someone in the position of minister to do that. You can do it. You can walk through uh, the plan of salvation with anybody who God places before you. If you don't know how to do that, please uh, message me. Please send a comment or something, and I can help you learn how to walk somebody through the plan of salvation. I want you to be equipped. It's not just for the ministers. It's not just for the pastors. It's not just for uh, those who uh, know the Bible real well. It's for all of us who call Jesus Christ as Lord. We're on mission to make the disciples and therefore you are required to know how to lead someone to Christ. Baptizing them. Now churches, uh, we have protocol and we baptize, but people were baptizing, people can baptize in tubs and things. Like that. It's just an outward symbol of an inward commitment. But the important part is someone knows Christ and you have the ability to know how to lead them to Christ. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then it says, teaching them to observe. This is where we miss it so much, so much that I see people do not know Christ. People say, proclaiming Christianity, but don't know the books of the Bible, can't navigate scripture. And it's not a, anything to be embarrassed about, but it is something to challenge each and every one of us, teaching them to ob observe, that we're spending time in God's word, to know it, to observe it, and that we're walking alongside people so that they are observing it. The whole walk of uh, walking with God is a community. We do it individually, but it is a community effort. And that's what scripture always says, because there's so many one another's, prefer one another, forgive one another, teach one another, pray for one another. We need to be in relationship with one another so that we can help observe. Yes, we're supposed to walk in the fruit of spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. But sometimes we have blinders over our eyes and we believe that we are living according to that and yet we are not, and we need people all around us to help to teach us. And many of us didn't grow up in homes that taught us, and so we need people to come alongside and teach us and help us to apply those teachings in our lives. Walk along somebody in your walk. You may not have it all. You need a mentor, and you need to be actively mentoring someone else. And again, this is not just pastors and teachers, but in this COVID season, people who have the gift of preaching and teaching and evangelizing and prophesying. This doesn't stop your ministry. Where are you? Who is around you? You begin to use those gifts in the places where you're at. Gosh, God is coming back. This world is not about, not about gaining things. This world is about gaining uh, believers, gaining disciples, so that when Jesus comes back, we will have a whole lot of people that we have influenced who will go with us when he returns. This is our purpose. That is your purpose. And as you remain faithful to that purpose, then God will begin to add on to the other aspects of your life that you may be praying for and have not yet received, that you will find purpose even in your loss when we remain committed and centered on the main purpose that we are, why we are here 
on this earth to go make disciples. Be encouraged today. Like this post if you have uh, enjoyed it, has spoken to you. Share this post if you believe someone else can be encouraged by it. For my YouTube uh, listeners, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when new videos are posted. And then you can always visit my website, Christ Like Life Ministries, at clministries.com for other inspirational content. We'll see you next Wednesday. God bless.